Hello everyone, uh, I am Glaive, and welcome to a ton of board tutorial. I will be showing you a tileable design that you can use just about anywhere. And it works in deep state, so that's very nice. Some of them don't anymore because of the TNT blast resistance and such. But to get started, here are the materials you need for a five wide bore that I'll be showing you today. We have anything from observer slime, probably the most important thing, dead coral fans and debris, which are going to be harder to get, but still not too hard. I'm going to take some of these things and we'll get started right away and we'll grab some of these things right here and go like that i'm gonna get rid of some of these things in my inventory real quick so i have more building room can uh, things to note optional things you might consider a beacon and a bed beacon to dig out the 30 by 30 block space that you need to build a five wide bore and the beacon helps with that. Beds, in case you die to a mob or get blown up by your own ton of bore, which has happened to myself. But let's get started here. First, we're going to be playing, let's see, three debris, followed by two building blocks, or three building blocks, if you don't want to use light sources in here. But these can all be three blocks, and I do recommend stone or higher for blast resistance. Next, it's going to be followed by an observer facing this way and a piston facing towards you, which looks like this. In front of the observer, we're going to place a wall, and then a top slab. On top of the observer, we're going to be playing Placing a dead coral fan. A live one will just turn dead, so it doesn't matter. And any coral fan works. It doesn't have to be like just a yellow one or just a red one. Any coral fan. On top of the slab, we're going to place a slime. And then a solid block. And then another slime. You can see this hitbox right here. You can place a slime on top of that. And then another top slab against the side of the slime. Your TNT goes on top of this wall. And your TNT duper is basically done, except for one step. This is your landing pad. So now we're going to go back here. I need to grab redstone blocks real quick. Okay, we're going to go out and over one. So it should be. Oops. Diagonal of the back here. If you had one block right here, it should be the diagonal. From the side of that, we're going to place a sticky piston. Come back to the side, place a normal piston. Get your slime. Place one, two, three. You can see it's a diagonal row of slime. Grab observers. Place one against the slime on this side, on this middle one. So the observer is facing out. And another one against that middle slime again. And so it's facing out. These two observers should be looking in the same block right here. Under the slime that the sticky piston is holding, place a normal piston. Followed by a slime block on the piston body right there. I should look at this. This is your engine. The engine part, we are going to build a temporary block here. Make a little L shape. Or backwards L, depending on where you're facing. You can break this block. Put a normal piston here. Put your note block, which I also left over here. There we go. Put your note block under the furthest slime and observe facing into it, followed by a solid block. 
place a sticky piston facing towards you on top of the solid block and a slam block on top. This is your trigger. Uh, an observer facing up. You should, the face should be looking up into the blocks. And one last sticky piston on the back here. So with this design, you could go up about a five by five uh, like square. So center on this block. It'll probably go like two blocks down, two blocks up-ish, and to the sides. And for this machine, you just click the note blocks and the whole thing will launch forward. There's one more step to complete this and that's arming the machine. You have to add this TNT minecart by pushing it on with a uh, piston. If you if you were to try placing on like this and place the minecart on, this TNT would ignite and explode. So we have to push it on to trick the TNT into thinking, that, oh yeah, I'm not powered anymore. Even though it is powered. So we can go like that. Come down to the side here. Put that minecart on. And go like that. And it didn't explode, so we're good. Uh, it is careful to note, you do not want to place any blocks on the side of the TNT when you're trying to place this minecart on. Because you, when you remove it, um, it would update the piece of TNT and it would also explode. So this is your one wide tunnel bore. Pretty simple and still probably faster than strip mining. The real magic is, is when you start adding more pieces to this. This machine is tileable. So first off, we're gonna grab the debris again. You can copy and paste exactly what you see here, but five blocks over. So one, two, three, four, five. On the sixth block, you'd place that down. I'm gonna be building all four sections now. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make them all three long, followed by two, by three solid blocks. I'm using light blocks just so it gives the machine light as you're using it. We don't want mobs spawning on or around the machine when you're using it. So if you were to like fly down your big tunnel that this thing makes and come across it, mobs could be on it if it's not lit up. This is a very repetitive process, which makes this machine very desirable, at least to me, because you can build this thing from a screenshot, block for block, as long as you remember to push the minecarts on correctly instead of trying to place them. Oops, I need that slime. And then TNT. And just like that, your TNT dupers are done. We'll need to build the engine next. I'm gonna grab these for later. So starting off your first engine, you're gonna have one, two, three uh, slime blocks. I'm gonna go like this. A redstone block, and this is where it starts repeating again. See this first one block here? Same thing, you start with this sticky piston, come back to the side, normal piston, three slime blocks, one, two, three, diagonal, observer facing the side, and observer facing the back. Repeat the process, so one, two, redstone block, sticky piston, normal piston, three slime, 
observer facing the side and facing the back and copy and paste over and over and you can do this this whole setup over and over for as long as you have a render distance on most servers that's going to be about 12 uh, chunks and I would recommend doing about 10 chunks that's the general rule of thumb is go two chunks under the server's render distance just to be safe on this particular server we are limited to a five wide ton of war so I'm only doing a five wide but as I've said it is a tileable design and as you can see you could just build this for a long time granted you have the debris needed and the other resources we'll come back through and place those bottom pistons it appears i'm missing one but i did grab my redstone choker out We'll grab a piston right there. I'll need two more actually. Now I think about it. So it's a good thing I had this. We'll place the last one right here. And it all should look the same. So if, if you were to look at it from the bottom or from the top, all of them should look exactly the same. And that means you did the machine right. This last section, when you're ending your ton of war, you only need the one slam block in between this observer and piston. You do not need to continue going out with slime like what we have over here with these two blocks and a redstone block. Last part, but pretty important, I'm just going to grab some blocks on the wall as temporary blocks. We're going to be placing blocks on the slime block like this and a stair, right? We're going to be placing a rail on both sides, piston facing the rail. Let's grab our mine carts, which are all in the materials chest. And we're going to push these mine carts on, just like we did last time. Hitbox there, hitbox there, and a good old lever. Be careful when mining these blocks. If you're mining it this way, it's quite possible that you continue mining and break the slime. Now the TNT shouldn't explode in this case because technically this is the powered block and you removed it before the TNT got updated. So that'd be fine, but you do have to like place a black and then push on the minecart again. Let's go between these two and we'll finish off the ton of board. So slime blocks, not TNT blocks. Because the last thing you want to do is update the TNT. Go like this. Like that. Pistons facing the rails. Lever. And minecarts. Okay, and we are completely done. Or should be, we'll find out. It looks like this. And to run it, as I mentioned before, you just click the note block, which I will do right now. A few rules first though. Rule number one is you want to keep these landing pads clear of any blocks on the side like this, where it's higher than the top of the pad. And any blocks on top. Commonly, gravel will be falling from the ceiling occasionally and it will land on here. And you always want to make sure that it's always clear on all of the all of these sides. So these three blocks right here need to be clear. Number two, uh, you always want to light it up behind you. In this case, we have some enough blocks that this uh, is completely lit up, right? But as you move the tunnel bore along, we are going to get unlit spots, and that's where creepers can come up behind you and unexpectedly blow up the machine. If it chains to TNT, the TNT is quite likely to chain over to its surrounding neighbors and completely destroy your board. So light up, that's rule number two. Keep the landing pads clear and light up behind you. Number three, 
we do not want to double click this uh, note block uh, if there's TNT already out on the landing pads. So you'll see it, I'll show you in a little bit. TNT will launch as soon as you click this. And if you're double clicking it, it can spawn two TNTs, three, depending on how many times you click it, right? That's gonna cause them to all fly everywhere and it could fly backwards onto the machine itself and cause a lot of damage that way. And the last rule of the four rules is uh, do not update the TNT, as I kind of covered earlier. Placing any blocks or breaking any blocks that are touching this TNT on any of its sides, do update it and it can explode unless you break this block. But we'll just say all blocks next to this TNT, if you break it, it explodes or place it next to it explodes. So best Y level for mining at least diamonds, because I assume that's what you're mining with this. Negative 54. If you want to go right over lava lakes, you don't have to clear out the lava and or anything. You just use a water bucket and place water over the lava, and you can just cruise along over it. Um, other than that, I think we're good. Let's give this thing a test run, and hopefully my redstone holds up. A few tips. I do highly recommend using an ore texture pack that uh, either highlights or outlines ore like this. It makes it really quick for when you have to check in front of the machine like this for ores and you don't miss as many. Uh, ores do have higher blast resistance than normal blocks. So you may think you're losing some because you're unfortunate, but most of the time you keep most of the ores uh, and you can just silk touch them or fortune them as you wish. So yeah, as you can see, you get about two and a half chunks of tunnel wide. And that's obviously way faster than strip mining. Because every four seconds, the time it takes for TNT to explode, you're removing about a 30, yeah, 30 wide by like five tall, close to like six or seven tall area of, of wall. And you cannot do that with strip mining, even with the beacon. And looky here, we found some diamonds. See, it is pretty quick, I'd say, to get diamonds this way. And since you're this low in the world, you get chances of finding them often like that are pretty high. So thank you all for coming out to this uh, tutorial, and I hope this helps you in some way.